My man's is home. He yeah. said he just want to be near the girl. Can you blame him? <laughs> I want to be near you too, baby. You already know what it is. Look at my man. Mm. We're almost at four months. Wow. Isn't that wild? Yeah, you look good, babe. You look good. Look at you. <laughs> look at you. Let's, let's address something real quick because the people is in the comments on our testimony video saying i talk too much wanting to give me words of wisdom let you talk more but i let them know like being in front of the camera is new for you you're naturally quiet you allowed me to take the lead because it's my area of expertise what do you have to say let the people know you let the people know what's up i do not like to always be in front of the camera but i'm willing to do it for you this is your field this is what you like to do. I'm going to continue to do content with you. Is this fun? Yeah, because you, know? you hit me up saying you wanted to do what? Some content. What? Yeah. As quiet as he is, he wants to create content. Sometimes you got to be uncomfortable to be comfortable. Being comfortable in the uncomfortable. Yeah. I was beating myself up about my YouTube journey because to start in 2016 and it's taking me until 2024 to really buckle down and see the fruit of my obedience. I thank God, some plants, some water, but it's God who brings the increase. We are on this journey of becoming and as we are walking out the steps in the direction towards the places and spaces that God is taking us, we are becoming more like Christ in the process and learning who God has called us to be. My friend made the response to my comment around, oh, I wish I would have taken it serious in 2016. I wonder where I would be today. She said, if you were going to blow up then, you would blow up now. It's always been about God's timing. And I'm realizing I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be on this journey. It's never about the destination. It's about who we become on the way to in between the word and a couple of God's promises. I find myself really falling in love each day with creating content and getting back to this creative space. I've been in a creative block for years, just going through the motions, riding off of my skill sets. And now I'm at a place where I am able to create and merge multiple worlds, merge video sound and the visuals to create pieces that speak to my authenticity. That's what branding is. That's what you need when you're building a business. It's about who you are being reflected in what you do so that when people walk away, what they say about you matters and that creates the brand experience. of an interest in uh, lavishness and wealth and that's what happened they lost their way and this is the result yeah i mean here's the thing go to the romans at the peak of their power when this was all standing and say to them you know that small little group of people from judea they're gonna <laughs> Good. Good. We're headed to church. Well, yeah. you excited? Church is exciting. Yes. New word. New revelation. Yep. Today, 
I'm leaning into it because I'm having to ask myself the question again, who do I want to be from this place of revelation, from this place of who God says I am, willing to release again another version of myself that does not fit who God is calling me to be. Prior to marriage, Trader Joe's run, once every two to three weeks, it will last me. Now I feel like I'm always at H-E-B. Trader Joe's is like 40 minutes from where we move. When you're married, you really gotta start thinking about new things like budgeting, cooking, all the things I did not have to think about when I was single. My goodness. Here we are again at H-E-B. Great. I did not come to grocery shop. I came to get a couple of things and I will map out a list of grocery shop Tuesday or tomorrow. So I'll be back again. Secured a few items, now I'm going home. I came to get my husband chicken. I didn't want to share because it only came with eight pieces and your girl was hungry. Let me just come and get him some chicken. I have things to cook for this week and then I go to Chicago. Once I get back from Chicago, I will make plans to figure out what I'm gonna cook. It's always awkward recorded next to people because they think I'm either talking to them or talking to myself. I am on a mission to getting my body back. In 2019, I cut out cardio, wanted to fully focus on weightlifting. It has wreaked a havoc on my back because I work from home and my career requires me to always be in front of a computer. This year, I'm determined to do 30 minutes of cardio. The goal is to get up to running daily but baby steps, okay? I'm already beat. 16 minutes in so far. Then I'm going to head over to the ladder app and do a quick 30 minute workout there. I'm done with my treadmill work. We're about to get into the ladder app. I'm happy about it. It's a new week. We'll go through the workouts. I'm tired already. I want to encourage you. God is faithful to keep and mighty to deliver. Whatever you're feeling, don't give up here. Just keep going, trusting God, leaning not into your own understanding, and he will make straight your path. kicking my butt, but we won't see it through.
The biggest challenge for me is showing up and wanting to innovate and get in my creativity bag without the pressure to perform. I am on social media for inspiration, not imitation. I look at what other people are doing in the realm of creativity when it comes to video because it inspires you to create. And what's really cool is I saw on uh, Justine cam Justine's camera roll, she uses her TV as a way to see if she's in frame or not. I think that's brilliant and I'm gonna do that. This month I'm giving myself the freedom to exist in the space of creativity, to learn new skills, and then we'll put a plan together. You can do that in an instant pot too. You can do that in an instant pot and a, um, a ninja bullet for uh, babies. I think they make one where you can make baby food. Listen, I'm adding all this stuff to the list. It has been hard for me to cook every day, navigate into this space of marriage and being a non-traditional woman when it comes to not fully being domesticated in regards to just cooking and all of those things. I want y'all to understand how it's like I'm feeding a whole family of four and it's only two of us. Out of curiosity, would you recommend other people to get married? Yeah, take your time not to rush into marriage. I ask God for wisdom and guidance navigating that space. Because marriage is challenging. What makes it challenging? That you're not always going to get your way into work. Would I recommend for singles to get married? If I knew what I knew now, would I still move forward in this direction? And ultimately, yes because I realized that the goal is always sanctification. We have the nugget in Psalms 105.19 that says Joseph's character is purged until the promises of God come to pass. That lets me know God is intentional about our process and the things that we go through on this side of obedience. Where things get tricky is when you're in disobedience because now you have to navigate the actual path of what God desires and having to have God redirect you back to the initial path because you started opening doors and going down slides he never intended. And that comes with its own baggage and its own consequences. On this side of obedience, I am better daily because I'm having to die to myself in new ways that helps me become more empathetic when it comes to helping other people on their respective journeys. That's good. I've been going through some roller coasters these past couple of weeks. I've been giving my emotions to God, my discomforts, and that's why Jesus Christ said, love your wives as Christ loved the church. That's not always easy, and a man cannot do that in his own strength. He needs God's supernatural help to do it. God was really helping me to realize and not fix my mind on the things that are true, worthy of being praised, honorable, commendable, whatever God's word says about like fixing our minds on those things, that that peace will be given to us. And there were a lot of wars, whether that was fear, whether that was anxiety, whether that was bitterness, that I had to really worship to fight. I'm feeling it. We are bouncing off of each other, which again is the importance of community. Let me take a another deep breath and share a little bit of my testimony over the last three months of transitioning into marriage, losing my job and things within my family just popping off in addition to my transmission blowing out. I had to decide if I was going to rest in the peace of God. There was a book that the Lord led me to called The Night is Normal by Alicia Brick Co. It speaks on how it's in the night seasons we grow the most. It's in the night seasons we realize where our faith is not rooted. It started with me reading a book on Anonymous by her, where she shared the story of her mentor who had miscarried and in the hospital room on her third miscarriage in the person's best intentions. They said, this is only preparing you for what lies ahead. And in that moment, she said, in this person's good intention, she didn't count it against her, but she realized that these moments were less about where she was going and more about who she has become in the process. That is where I have been in these last few months of, do I really believe God is who he says he is? 
do I really trust him? Do I really have peace? Was this peace conditional? Because life in my eyes was good and now that it's not, like, what do you do? Do you lay down and get defeated? I'll be honest, there were a few days where I didn't even wanna get out the bed. I self-sabotaged and I cried to my mom, my husband and people in my community. They yoked me up. You either gonna cry or are you gonna believe and walk out the things that God has said because if God is faithful to complete what he started, he won't forsake you here. If God says we have an expected end, he won't forsake us here. Even when we can't see it, this is where the struggle is producing the character. This is where the integrity is being birthed. This is where the trust is being birthed because it's less about can I trust God and more about can God trust us. I was talking to my husband earlier about the decisions that we make on our journey of becoming. We don't realize that there are things that we are just going to have to go through because it's life and because it's a part of our story. Then there are things that we go through because of the decisions that we make outside of the obedience with Christ. God has us going up this bridge, over this mountain, and down this slide, and we back here running around, opening doors when God didn't say that. He said, keep walking, go up that bridge, down that path, and, and on that slide, why, why, are we, why are we back there in a hot air balloon? We make decisions that end up adding extra chapters and narratives that God never intended, but he'll still get the glory out of it because all things work together for the goodness of those that love him and are called according to his purpose. And we're called according to his purpose. He factors in every decision we are going to make. Some of the stuff we talk about tonight may not be new. You're just at a new place in maturity where you're actually able to, to do something about it. For many of us, we've been in this place between the word and God's promises. We know what the word says, the Bible, and we know what the prophetic promise is. But we've been in this middle gray area for so long that all of it's starting to run together and we don't even think it, it's gonna happen. What happens when you find yourself in between the word and a couple of God's promises? Today is just one of them days where it just ain't the day. So I'm gonna go to the gym, I'm gonna work out, I'm gonna push through, I'm gonna keep trusting God, I'm gonna lean in and let God be God because I'm over it. on FaceTime with Dina and we are just reminiscing on the fact that I had to go and get more flour what well, my husband did because my last batch had a worm in it like who this part of wifehood I, I don't know I don't know if it's for me okay and I'm trying they said get a recipe that you like and cook and I like this recipe but I don't think I like it anymore it's Let ghetto out here. Let them yes, I'm making chicken and dumplings from scratch. So I didn't cook the broth, cook the chicken, ready to put it all together, and then sprinkle, sprinkle, and a worm want to start crawling across the counter. And just like that, 